Welcome fellow thrill seekers. Get ready to embark on a series of hair-raising tales that will send shivers down your spine. From haunted daycares to cursed houses and encounters with the supernatural, we have a collection of stories that will keep you on the edge of your seat. Subscribe, hit the bell icon, and brace yourselves for a chilling journey into the unknown. One day, my family and I moved into a new house with two floors. At first, I was scared, but in the evening, the lights went out. My dad went to check the circuit breaker. Nobody had been paying for this house. There were rumors that our house was built on a cemetery, but the cemetery had been relocated. My dad went to check the basement, and there was a dead body lying there. He got scared closed the basement, and told us not to go in there. One day, I went in there, and there was nobody. When I wanted to go back, the door slammed shut. There was nobody home except for me, so nobody could have slammed the door. I ran and tried to open the door but couldn't. I sat there for a long time, and when my parents came, I shouted that I was in the basement. Then the door opened. I looked and saw that my parents were dead. I looked at the basement door, and then I saw a shadow. It stood there and whispered that the house was cursed. Then the shadow disappeared, and everything around me whispered, you will die. I left the house, set it on fire. When it was burning, I saw something resembling a corpse. It turned out to be a corpse. The whole house was made of corpses and animals. I vowed never to move into another house again, and I started living with my grandmother in our ancestral home. This happened about a month ago. My two friends and I decided to visit an old daycare center, specifically its playground, yes, it's strange. But you can come to this daycare at any time the gates are open. It was around 6 in the evening. When we arrived, everything seemed fine. We were swinging on the swings and playing truth or dare. After about 15 minutes, when I finished my dare and sat back on the swing, I noticed that a large hand wearing a gray glove was holding onto the swing. The hand was slightly above my head. When I turned around, there was no one there anymore. I told Kate and Nasty Lim wife friends about it. The girls were very scared, and we decided to go home. On the way, Nasty told us that she saw a silhouette in one of the daycare's windows. A week later, we went to the same daycare again, but with a different group, me, Katya, and our friend Amira. This time, our parents came with us. Amira was playing with my dog, Katya was talking on the phone with someone, and I sat on the swing. After five minutes, I called my friend who promised to come, and after finishing the call, I looked at the daycare building. Everything seemed normal, but then I saw a man in a gray worker's jumpsuit. He was walking very close to the daycare's wall. Suddenly, he looked up and stared at me. I got extremely scared, and he quickly reached the corner of the daycare and disappeared. No, he didn't turn the corner. He vanished. How did I know? The daycare was situated right next to the fence, so it was impossible for him to turn the corner. My dog also noticed the man she started barking at him, and even after he disappeared, Miu and my dog continued growling at the empty space for another two minutes. I was terrified and told Kate about it. Tom Mira is only five years old. She wouldn't understand, and she's my mom's friend's daughter. That's why I talked to her. Katya got scared too and mentioned that when we went to this daycare during the summer, she saw the silhouette in the daycare's windows several times. So, what could this have been? Maybe you know.
A scream. A terrifying and chilling scream. What could it mean? I got out of bed. The lights in the apartment were off apparently. The scream didn't wake up my parents. When I stepped out onto the balcony, a horrifying scene unfolded before me. A car accident. Four cars. The scream had ceased. I glanced at the time it was 2 a.m. 2 a.m. In the night. And I headed back with a sleepy stride. Oh well, they collided. I'll find out everything tomorrow. A year passed. My life continued its usual course. Until one strange incident happened to me in the morning. Taking my setter for a walk. I saw the silhouette of a person. The dog started behaving strangely. Whimpering softly and barking. I dismissed it well. It's barking. As long as this dog doesn't wake anyone up early in the morning. As I passed by the silhouette. I could clearly make out that it was a girl. She stood still. Slightly hunched over. When my dog approached her and barked, she turned around. I felt horror. I wanted to run, but my gaze was fixed on her face pupilless and marked by horrifying, still fresh scars. She began to approach, and in her voice screamed at me, run, and I ran. It felt like someone was chasing after me. I foggy murdering, exactly one year after the tragedy. I had no doubts it was the ghost of the girl who died in that accident. Sighting Monday in the gloomy morning, I tried to forget that encounter, but it wasn't so easy. A couple of days later, another strange incident occurred. I woke up because someone was watching me. The silhouette and the same pupilless face were visible on the balcony. I rubbed my eyes, but the face didn't disappear. Then I blacked out. The next day, the neighbors upstairs apparently, the ghost had visited them to call the priest to bless the building. Since then, everything returned to normal. But once a year, that ghost still appears and wanders by our windows.